What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So, as expected, about two hours this time after Newswave went up yesterday, we did have the anticipated direct announced by Nintendo on Twitter. And of course, the hype levels are through the roof right now. Everyone's excited to see what Nintendo is going to announce later on today. And we'll go over some of that here and a couple predictions and all of this as we're all kind of hanging out waiting for this direct to happen. Also, we are be talking about a big sale going on right now on the PlayStation Store with actually some fairly new games even being on sale. And we're also gonna be talking about a patent that was discovered for Valve that could make those larger games that you have to download a bit more convenient to deal with. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring that notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with the whole Apple versus Epic case that had been ongoing for a while. We did get to a point where there was a verdict and it appeared that there was going to be an appeal on Epic's side, but we can see this over on Twitter. This from Tim Sweeney saying, late last night, Apple informed Epic that Fortnite will be blacklisted from the Apple ecosystem until the exhaustion of all court appeals, which could be as long as a five year process. Tim Sweeney seems absolutely shocked by this and I'm not really sure why, uh, mostly because you're kind of pushing Apple, right, with what you were doing before, which was just introducing a separate payment portal in Fortnite. So I, I don't really know why you think they would be like, oh, come on back. Let's get you back on the, the Apple store, the iOS store. It's Apple's going to make an example out of Epic any way they can. And if it's basically keeping them off of the iOS store, the app store, I don't think it's that big of a deal to Epic or Apple to not have Epic's Fortnite available on their phones and tablets and all that. It's a drop in the bucket overall to Apple, even though I know Fortnite is very big and it brings in a ton of revenue to Apple. It's worth just keeping it off of their stores until yes, this possible five year, uh, five year process runs through. Also, we did have Dragon Quest 12 announced at that anniversary live stream. And it appears that it's, it's gonna be a while before we see this game come out, but we did have some job listings kind of confirming which studios are helping out with the game. We can see this over on Nintendo Life where they say Dragon Quest 12 is being co-developed by Square Enix, Hexadrive, and Orca. Now they go on to explain that Hexadrive did work and assist with games like Final Fantasy 15, as well as even with Nintendo for The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD on the Wii U. And Orca did help out with Dragon Quest XI S as well as Ace Combat 7. Both Hexadrive and Orca are currently advertising for a wide range of positions, which suggests that the next Dragon Quest installment is still some ways off. And uh, yeah, I would agree with that. In fact, I don't even know if Dragon Quest uh, 12 is gonna be coming out on the current Switch. I seriously think that could end up being a next-gen Switch title. As you remember, they did announce Dragon Quest XI way back in the day for the NX, right? So yeah, that, that's something that's gonna be a ways off and the fact that they're hiring a ton of positions, which even comes down to like character art, probably gonna be a good three, even four years before Dragon Quest 12 comes out. Oh, and there is a lot of excitement around the Steam Deck as we head towards the end of the year when it starts making its way out to pre-order customers. Well, it appears that developers are starting to get some hands-on time with the system. Of course, they can develop and update their games as needed. We can see this over on VGC. Let's say developers are getting their Steam Decks and giving their initial verdicts. We can see one tweet here from Mike Rose, even showing off some of the performance with Descenders, saying it runs incredibly well with full ultra graphics on, and they get about 50 to 60 frames per second. I also like this one from X-Plane, <laughs> just showing like the, the massive joysticks and everything attached to like this little handheld system there. I know the Steam Deck is technically a large handheld system, but it, it certainly looks much smaller with the joysticks around. And then of course, them also playing X-Plane there on the beach. Now, it was mentioned that some of these games will need updates in the sense that if it's like a keyboard and mouse game, the controls didn't appear to work, the touchscreen still did. So it's good to see that Valve is getting these Steam Decks out to developers now so they can have their games updated and ready to go this holiday when the Steam Deck ships out. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with the Nintendo Direct that will be airing later on this evening. We can see this tweet over here. This sent out from Nintendo of America. Tune in September 23rd at 3 p.m. Pacific. That'll be 6 p.m. Eastern time for a Nintendo Direct live stream featuring roughly 40 minutes of information focused mainly on Nintendo Switch games launching this winter. So people looked at this tweet and said, well, okay, this winter, so this holiday will technically 
winter, the season, runs until the third week of March. So this could be going all the way up through the first quarter of 2022 when it comes to games that they are referring to here. But we've seen Nintendo do this before. They're like, oh, game's coming out this year. And then they tell us about a game that has no release date and could be coming out the following year or even the year after that. So I don't put too much stock in them saying, oh, the winter, that, those are only the games we're going to talk about because there's always that chance of a big reveal and announcement, a surprise at the end, just to get people excited for the future of the Switch as we go along here. But winter, like I said, could run into March next year. So certainly plenty of, uh, of spaces to fill up next year specifically. This year, I kind of feel like Nintendo is set with what they have. Even going into January, we have Pokemon Arceus there right at the end of the month. But that is from the Pokemon company, and that's not necessarily just 100% Nintendo. So they might want to even have something slide into January themselves from their first parties. And of course, going into February and then also into March. I'm wondering if they're going to have much here for the next couple of months in 2021, since they've already kind of loaded that up. But let's talk about some of the things we can expect to see here. The first one is the most obvious one. It's the thing that a lot of people are currently expecting, and that has to do with an update for the Nintendo Switch Online. It seems like the two front runners now, it would be either Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or the Nintendo 64. Both of these could be here because they may look to introduce a premium price tier, and we assume that that controller would be something for the Nintendo 64 with that FCC filing, having its confidentiality agreement uh, go up tomorrow with the date being moved to the 24th, then I assume that would be revealed here. Who knows though? Maybe it's something to do with the Game Boy and they're just adding in Game Boy and Game Boy Color uh, with the Nintendo Switch Online. I do kind of believe we're going to see Splatoon 3. That appears to be something set for the first half of 2022 at least is what I'm anticipating. So that could be something that slides into like a March release and would be a good reveal here with that release date. Uh, maybe Maybe Legend of Zelda, the compilation for Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, that was rumored a while ago. And Nintendo kind of played into the idea of them being done with the Legend of Zelda anniversary celebration. But I wouldn't be surprised if they had one more reveal, something like that, to drop onto the Switch. The, the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass is set to wrap up with one more fighter. A lot of people think it could be here. It was even trending with all types of selections. Sure, why not? We'll go with Sora to, to wrap things up here. I, I do wonder, though, if it would maybe be something that they would set for a reveal with the Game Awards, right? As, like, the last fighter, they have it kind of off on its own at the Game Awards, of course, with other games around it, but in, in like, uh, possibly a sea of announcements here from Nintendo, it will be a lot of excitement for people, but there's always a chance it could be overshadowed or just shared talking points with some other stuff from Nintendo if that was the case. But hey, if they have like Sora or Master Chief, who knows, that could be the big announcement here. We'll also most likely see the last big push for the OLED Switch that's coming out here in a couple of weeks next to Metroid Dread. I don't believe we're going to see anything with Metroid Prime 4 because that certainly could overshadow Metroid uh, Dread because Prime 4, of course, being the big 3D game and how people look at 2D versus is 3D. I think it's best just to show the OLED Switch and show Metroid Dread right next to it since they're both releasing the same day. I also am not looking for anything with Breath of the Wild 2 here as they had shown it previously and it sounded like they were targeting 2022, which does tell me that they're not 100% sold on it even releasing next year. Now, for third parties, this is where I think things can get interesting. .hackgu recode that was uh, rated, so I'm expecting that to be here. Uh, Alan Wake Remastered, also rated. I question that rating a little bit, but maybe Nintendo really does want to reveal it on their own time. I'm hoping that Castlevania Advanced Collection is set to be revealed here. I, it looks like that's going to be on all platforms, but hey, maybe Nintendo wants to reveal it here themselves. And something will be really cool would be if the Grand Theft Auto Remaster Trilogy, remember, this would be the first time any of these games would be on a Nintendo platform, like Vice City, San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto 3, was revealed in a Nintendo Direct. That'd be such a turnabout for Rockstar and Nintendo. I'm also gonna just go ahead and throw in Hollow Knight Silk Song because we'll just guess that it'll be at every single Direct and Mini and Indie Showcase until it finally appears. And then Sports Story. You know what? We should just shadow drop Sports Story. Just, just go ahead, surprise everyone with that. That would be one of the coolest announcements here. And... You know what? We're going to finish it up. I'm wearing the mother shirt because why not? We'll try to will something to into existence here 
for, for Mother 3. Just take that shot in the dark, the big surprise. Mother 3 is coming over, and it's part of the not only Game Boy, Game Boy Color, but also Game Boy Advance being added. Let, let's do it, Nintendo. Let's finally make that happen. But certainly exciting stuff here. A 40-minute Direct later on today to look forward to a big General Direct. So we are expecting some big announcements here, which, yes, generally leads to some pretty big disappointment. But here's hoping Nintendo at least has a Nintendo Switch online update with a new system like the Game Boy or Game Boy Color and a couple of big reveals and Bayonetta 3 because I mean let's face it if Bayonetta 3 is not at this direct I feel like a lot of people will be very concerned around this game since it was revealed the first year that the Switch released it's been that long so I fully expect Bayonetta 3 to be here and if it's not that's uh that'll be concerning but let me know what you're expecting to see here your best predictions for the Nintendo Direct that airing later on today. Next up, let's talk about the big in Japan sale going on right now for the PlayStation Store. There are actually quite a few games here on sale and some of them are even newer titles and I was surprised at the pretty heavy discounts that they were seeing, but let's head over here to the PlayStation Store. This sale is running until October 7th, so you have a couple of weeks to kind of check things out here. We'll start at the top with Neo The World Ends With You, currently going for $42. I went ahead and just picked out a couple of pretty good looking discounts on some of these games. Near Replicant at $39. Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate at $50. Scarlet Nexus is already down to $36. I noticed that even physical copies had fallen in price and I, I just feel like this game did not sell as well as like what Bandai was hoping for. So maybe dropping the price down, we'll just get more copies out there as it appeared that they were trying to make this into like an entire ongoing franchise. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is down to $18. I think that's the cheapest that I've seen it so far. And I mean, $18, that's a pretty good pickup. 13 Sentinels is half off down to $30. Trails of Cold Steel 4 is $39. Ninja Gaiden Master Collection coming in at $30. Everybody's Golf at $10. We also have both Gravity Rushes. We have Gravity Rush 1 at $15 and Gravity Rush 2 at $10, Tales of Zestria at $9. I put Fire Pro Wrestling World in there because why not? That's down to $10. And then Zone of the Ender, Second Runner Mars at $7.50. And the list of games that are on sale right now just go on and on and on. Seriously, there's like hundreds of games seeing discounts on the PlayStation Store right now. And like I said, some pretty good ones and relatively new ones. Neo The World Ends With You, Near Replicant, and even Scarlet Nexus, which is like almost half uh, price of what it was when it first came out not too long ago. Definitely worth picking some of those up, but leave some suggestions down below, of course, for others. Anything you spotted here that looks pretty good at those prices. I mean, you can get Gravity Rush 1 and 2 combined right now at $25. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a new patent from Valve that could make these larger game installs and downloads a bit more manageable and just convenient overall. We can see this over on Twitter. This from Pavel, Steam DB, saying, new Valve patent for tracking game file read operations and to allow instant play where you can start a game before it finishes downloading. They go on to say, other examples include freeing up space by removing unused data and pre-fetching data to decrease latency when loading. This feature does not require game developers to change anything. And patents, of course, doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to be something that's implemented. However, it makes sense for Valve to do that, especially if they can work it into Steam natively, because we have seen this feature used across the board. Like We've seen it on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, all of this, where you're downloading a game, it gets to a certain point, and it kind of pops up and says, ready to start. And you go in, certain options are disabled. Maybe you can go in and do like training missions as you're waiting for the rest of the game to download and install, but at least gets you into the game and playing it while you're having it download in the background. I like the idea of this just being integrated into Steam for games that would allow something like that. And who knows, maybe even have developers kind of work out the game so that it does have the first level, for example, that might be like 10, 15 minutes long as the first thing that really gets downloaded and installed so you can start playing the game and not even notice the rest of the 20 or 30 gigabytes that have to be downloaded and installed. It's just a way to get you into the game 
faster overall. And obviously being able to free up space by removing unused data is very helpful, especially since we see some of these games get up to over a hundred gigabytes without breaking a sweat now. So we'll see if Valve maybe implements this going forward in a future Steam update. And before we go to the comment of the day or tale of the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, Nintendo Direct is set for tomorrow. Do we have a new system added to Nintendo Switch online in the presentation? 57% say yes. 43% said no. I wanted to get the final vote here to see how everyone's feeling. And it's more split than I thought. Like I was kind of thinking more people would just say, yeah, it's time. Uh, we have that controller pat or that controller FCC filing that appears to just be made public tomorrow. Everything's kind of leaning into it, but there are people who are just kind of doubting that Nintendo would even do that. So I guess we'll find out here later on uh, today. I'm leaning towards the idea of them at least adding Game Boy and Game Boy Color but maybe they go crazy and say, just throw it all in there. Here's Nintendo 64, here's Game Boy Advance, that's part of a premium tier, and then here's Game Boy and Game Boy Color, just kinda add it in. I guess we'll find out here pretty soon. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Tubby J saying, it's funny how even Yuji Naka is questioning the Wada scam. Quick, someone asked Miyamoto about those Mario auctions. I kinda think Yuji Naka was looking at that and saying, well, I have copies of Sonic the Hedgehog that are sealed still, just at home. Can I just get those graded and sell them for nearly half a million dollars a piece? I think the wheels are starting to turn with Yuji Naka there with all that. What a twist that would be in this whole Wada story that I'm sure will become a documentary someday way off in the in the future, right? They'll watch on Netflix or something. The, the, the Wada conspiracy where these games are getting graded and they're pumping up the retro market and here comes Yuji Naka. He just happens to have 10 of these sealed Sonic Hedgehog cartridges and he partners up and he gets them graded and, and put out there and they all sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece. And then at the end, all, all of this, he used that money to fund Balan Wonder World Two and Wada was responsible for it the whole time. And ladies and gentlemen, that's good to hear for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button, it really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's this 40 minute Nintendo Direct coming up here later on today? Give me your best and wildest predictions down in the comments. Also, what about this PlayStation Big in Japan sale? Give me your best picks down in the comments. Any suggestions you may have for people who are looking through them? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.